Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Games, and welcome to my essential guide to independent and low-budget filmmaking. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Opening Nights for giving me this platform to talk about my experiences as a filmmaker, and when I was asked to do this essential guide, I thought to myself, I thought, what really is my essential guide? I've never really thought about it. Um, I'm not going to talk about camera angles or you know certain film kits all of those things in particular are things that you can easily find on the internet very easily on youtube what i wanted to do was i wanted to do something that was uh unique to me things that have worked for me as a filmmaker uh things that i've learned things that i've learned from scratch even mistakes that i've made that have been very valuable as a lesson I've been able to take that with me and it's things I can share with you which I hope will help you. Again, these are my personal experiences that I will be using for my essential guide so what has worked for me may not necessarily work for you but I hope that you will find some form of value in some of the things that I will share with you uh, today. So I will use my own experiences, films that I've made as a filmmaker as a reference to the points I'll be making today. So my first piece of advice, which is uh, necessary for both short films and feature films, is to use your surroundings to your advantage. Sometimes if we have no money, or we're very tight with our budget, the best thing to do is to use your surroundings. Use rooms or environments that you have easy access to, if better free of charge. So you could do something that's a drama set at home about a family. Well, you've got your own home. And with if it's your own home or if it's you know someone else's roof you live under, such as your parents, for example, You can ask permission of your parents and ask if you can use the house as a film set. And the best thing to do then is to create a story that can be utilised within those surroundings because it costs you nothing. It's real, it's tangible. The actors involved can, you know, adapt to that surroundings because it's a natural home surrounding. So that works well. So create a story if you can based on the surroundings that you know you have access to, which will cost you very little to nothing, is the first thing that I would do. Point number two on the Andrew Gaines Essential Guide to Independent and Low Budget Filmmaking. Choose a topic that you are passionate about. Your best work are going to be the ones that focus on topics that you are passionate about or subject matters that you are genuinely, strongly interested in. So, for example, I am a huge lover of history. I'm a a sucker for history. You know, my brain is a sponge. I just suck all that information in. And I want to tell those stories. So, naturally, being passionate about it, I want to be able to tell those stories. And, you know, those stories would be very well developed and strong and would be able to stand on its own two feet. Not only will your work be strong, the other reason why I think you should choose a topic that you are passionate about is because especially in the context of a feature film when I made Damn Delicious I knew especially considering that all the investors who we approached and all the film studios we approached were not particularly interested or didn't see any value in the film uh, I knew this was going to be uh, a self-financed film which I'll get to a little bit later on but I knew that doing it on my own this is going to take a while to make and I had to ask myself very seriously am I really passionate enough about this subject where I can tolerate and bear the content for as long as it takes Uh, at the time when production started we thought it would be a year then the pandemic struck and it ended up being uh, two years in fact maybe maybe even longer than that maybe three years you know but it was as frustrating as it was for it to be that long when you really wanted to finish the film by the same token I didn't mind because the subject matter the content and the research and the topic in question 
the teddy boy subculture. It was something I was genuinely interested in, so I never got bored with it. I was never fed up. Choose something that you are absolutely passionate about, especially if it's something that you're going to be working on for a while. My next point on my essential guide is investment. Naturally, I'm going to recommend going to film investors, going to film studios and pitching your film as strongly as you can. Get as much help and support as you can financially from other resources. When pitching Dan Delicious, um, people who we approached loved the idea. They felt that it was something very interesting, but the reason why we didn't get the support uh, in the first place was because people did not think that the teddy boy subculture would be a relevant subject for people to buy into. So we had to go down a different route. One of those routes was a crowdfunding campaign. So we used Kickstarter. This is an opportunity for people to pledge money. We were able to have a very successful crowdfunding campaign. As well as the crowdfunding campaign, what I also had to do was I had to support the film out of my own pocket as well. So sometimes you are going to have to have side hustles in between work. So what I used to do personally was outside of Dandelicious, whatever acting jobs that I had, whether it be theatre or film or television, uh, as well as side hustles that I'd have in between, whatever my wages were, a percentage of that would go towards the film company to help support the film. So investment is important. Get support from investors or film studios. A Kickstarter campaign, perhaps, but be prepared as well to support it out of your own pocket. Again, going back to my previous point about doing something that you're passionate about, as well as it being a topic, I think overall as a product, you've got to ask yourself, am I passionate about this enough where I have to support it out of my own pocket as well but if again if you love it and you believe in it then it's worth every penny my next point be bold with your choices in my personal opinion there is nothing worse than playing to the gallery this is something that david bowie has mentioned in the past he says um for artists to play to the gallery is a very dangerous thing artists generally create their worst work don't be scared to be bold with your ideas. Do things that people have never done before. Metaphorically speaking, I think you should be climbing up a mountain. And the higher up you get, the harder it is to grasp that oxygen into your lungs. Where you should be, you should be at just the right spot where you can still breathe, but you can only just get that breath. Metaphorically speaking, when you're in that place, you're in the right spot of doing something, I believe, something very interesting, maybe even something special. Push yourself, challenge yourself, be bold with your choices. My next point, be prepared for criticism. People are going to support you, people are gonna watch what you do, but be prepared, there's always going to be criticisms, there are gonna be people who are gonna rain on your parade. But whilst preparing for it, remind yourself that it's nothing personal. Art, at the end of the day, it is subjective, People are going to love it. People are going to hate it. I'm very lucky that the majority of the Teddy Boy subculture love Dandelicious. But I also have to bear responsibility that by being bold with my decisions in making the film and having the presentation for it that it has, you know, it is going to turn people off. It is going to alienate people, especially of a certain age demographic. And therefore, there is going to be a lot of criticisms. Now, if people have constructive criticisms, I encourage you to listen. I encourage you to engage and have interesting debates. There's always something valuable that you can take away. If it's just hate for the sake of being hate, well, ignore it because you'll just be defending the film like a broken record and it's, it's going to go nowhere. Be prepared for criticism. Don't take it personally. Engage in constructive criticism. Take notes. You might learn something and grow from that. My last point on my essential guide to independent and low budget filmmaking and probably the most important one and the one that I believe has been very strong and prominent in my journey. Have perseverance. We've all been through it as artists. We've all been through the rough of the rough. 
as well as the smoother the smooth, but more often than not, the rougher the rough. There are times where we're going to look in the mirror and question, am I doing the right thing? Am I in the right industry? Is it worth what I'm doing? Am I just wasting my time? Is anyone going to watch what I'm creating? You're going to ask yourself those questions. It's difficult. But take it from me, from someone who has had those obstacles, has had naysayers, um, and I'll be very transparent about it. You know, I've had naysayers, I've had people who have kind of sneered and jeered and said, you know, what are you doing that for? You know, you're wasting your time. And, you know, to be on the other end of it now, of that journey and to be at the point that I'm at now having that perseverance I'm so grateful that I have that in me and I encourage all artists not just filmmakers actors musicians dancers you name it have that perseverance it is so important to maintain that energy that attitude that determination to get to the finish line and sometimes it's not the finish line that is important. It's the journey that gets you to the finish line. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed my essential guide to independent and low-budget filmmaking. I'd like to thank Opening Night once again for giving me the platform to share my knowledge and my journey. And I look forward to hearing about your journey as well. Thank you very much.